it's important to know how and where to invest your money. You know, you work hard for the money and you want it to have a positive return. Especially as you approach retirement or maybe you're in your retirement eight uh, years and you're on a fixed income, for some the stock market has been an opportunity to increase their nest egg. Yet others question that is it a still a good place to put their hard earned uh, cash. Our next guest can help us sort through the pros and cons of this, of this uh, mystery. Ted Kerr is the managing partner of Touchstone Capital Incorporated here in Pittsburgh. And Ted, we want to welcome you back onto the program. Thank you, Thank you for coming. Yeah, Thank you very much. You know, it is, it is, my mother-in-law called me just last week and she said, Don, what should we, what should I do with my little bit of savings that I have? Mm. What, what should I do with it? Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to tell her. Mm -hmm. So Ted, what's, what should you do with it? <laughs> Help me out, man. Let me condense 20 years of experience down into a single question. Um, it's complicated, obviously, and I think that's what drives people away from setting up a plan is because they don't know where to start. Uh, I think the important thing that I wanted to bring up today is because a lot of people are raising questions about whether to invest in stocks or stock mutual funds at all mm -hmm. because we've gone through a very difficult decade. We've had two significant declines mm -hmm. and a lot of people are saying, you know, should I even trust investing in the stock market anymore, whether I'm old or young, regardless of what my goals are? And I think it's, it's a common enough question that I thought it was something that maybe we should have a conversation around, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, it is a common question. Mm -hmm. Very important question. Mm -hmm. Because as you face, what am I going to do with this resource that I've been trusted with? Exactly. You know, you think of the parable of the talents. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, and these three individuals that took the talent, mm -hmm. different varied amounts, but they were responsible for being good stewards with it. Mm -hmm. How do you be a good steward with the resources? So there are different types of investments, and stocks are typically associated with long-term goals. So if you're a young parent who just had a child you want to save for college education 15, 18 years away, that would be a typical long-term investing goal that would involve stocks. If you're saving for retirement, obviously that would be another typical response to when should you invest in stocks. But today, people are concerned that stocks might be dead, that, that they have no future in investing because so much money was lost in the past. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the most important things that investors can do is try to stand back and be more objective. We tend to see the world from where we stand. And with all the people who have lost jobs or gone through transitions in their workplace, they sense what's going on in terms of the government or in other parts of the world that there's a lot to be concerned with. And as a result, they see the stock market, they see their investments through the lens of all of that concern. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the stock market and stocks in general here in the United States are as strong financially as they've ever been. I mean, that's, that's a news report to most people. Their balance sheets are as clean as they've ever been. With low interest rates, they've paid off debt, they've refinanced. Of course, they've laid off workers, which hurts certain segments of the population. But in terms of the corporate world, they're very profitable. Companies are as profitable as they've ever been. And I could give you other reasons to support that if you look at the stock market and companies objectively, that really are a great place to invest right now. And that's a news account to most people. Well, it is. When you watch the news, there's all the talk of the bubble breaking and, mm -hmm. you know, reached its, it's mm -hmm. going to, the stock market's time to adjust mm -hmm. itself, you know, and all this, this mm -hmm. kind of uh, rhetoric. And I'm not sure that a person that watches the news mm -hmm. and has a little bit of a nest egg feels comfortable to put it mm -hmm. investment into the stock market. Well, there's always reasons not to invest. And so there was a time in uh, a while back, I had a poster in my office on my wall and it was called the wall of worry. And it was about a 50 year chart of the stock market. And every so many years, there was a news headline printed that, that was rather dramatic and it certainly would be memorable to anyone who had lived through that. And yet there it was, the stock market going up and up and up over a long period of time, of course, with periodic periods of pullback. But there's always reasons not to invest. There is always a wall of worry that we face. Mm -hmm. And yet we need to look at it more objectively and realize that long term, there is usually not a better place to put your money. Over a long, what's long term mean? How many years? Ten or more years. Ten or more years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah ten or more I was years. in a mock stock market back in my high school days. Uh -huh. But uh, I thought it was really neat to see 
if it would have been real, I would have been a millionaire because it was like Microsoft and <laughs> Apple days back in the mid 90s. Yeah. But, uh, you know, for someone who wants to invest today, what are the steps? Like who, where do they go? What mm -hmm. do they do? Well, of course, you could choose to, to call and work with a personal financial advisor, but really most people have access to some type of 401k or some type of savings plan through their work, and they only have so many investments they can choose from. So the place to start is with your employer-sponsored plan and to get help from those who have been appointed to service that plan to help you to understand what options are available to you. You could take this complicated world of investing and boil it down to maybe a half a dozen options. And so it's, a lo it's going to be a lot less complicated than most people realize. And after a half hour or an hour conversation with a, a servicing agent from that plan, you can get a handle on which of the best, which of the investments would be most appropriate for your age and mm -hmm. proximity to your financial goals. Well, are there other things, Ted, that in, in conjunction with the stock market, may be good places for you to invest money? Mm -hmm. Some people like real estate. Mm -hmm. Other people like bonds, for mm -hmm. instance. What's your, what's your thoughts about that? So one rule of thumb is that you should invest the amount of money in bonds that is the percentage uh, equivalent to your age. So if you're 55 years old, you should have 55% of your money in bonds. Uh, that's a rule of thumb, and I think like many other rules of their type, uh, can get you into trouble if you, if you drill down and invest in that manner uh, too legalistically. But it gives you a sense that there are times of life where you should have more bonds than stocks. Um, so bonds are a, a reasonable place to invest. They generate income and relative safety of principle. Real estate, you mentioned, is also a, a great form of investing. You know, the institutional investors that invest for endowments and invest for other large investors, they have large chunks of investment real estate in their portfolio, but the average retail investor has virtually none. And so that's typically a hole in the investment portfolio that if investors look in the right places, they can also add some exposure to real estate as well. Mm -hmm. So if you, have a, if you have a client who is uh, approaching retirement, mm -hmm. and that, the, of course, I, you know, I'm, I'm the kind of guy who doesn't think retirement really is a biblical process. Yeah. You know? yeah. We should never retire, we should just uh, reinvigorate. Uh -huh. But say you're at a place where you're ready to leave a job mm -hmm. and you're gonna go on to something else. What's your best advice to them with like their 401k or mm -hmm. whatever monies they have put aside up to this point mm -hmm. uh, to get them ready for that transition? Mm -hmm. Well, starting earlier is better than starting later. later. Um, I have a joke that when people come to me two months before retirement and want to do retirement planning, I call it damage control because at that point there's not a lot you can do um, to set up for a better retirement. But for those people who are on the threshold of a significant life change, such as something approaching retirement, um, sitting down and plotting out where is their income going to come from. You know, most people are going to be eligible for Social Security. Some people might get a pension through their employer or perhaps a past employer. Uh, how much income can your investments generate? So putting together a working plan that will involve their invest investing income and pension income replacing their earned income. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it's actually more simple than people realize. You just have to pull out a back of an envelope and a pen and, and start putting together that income plan to cross over that threshold successfully. There's an opportunity. A lot of people miss this opportunity. I want you to listen to me when I tell you about this. There's an opportunity as you approach the career transition and you've put aside monies that you have in, in your retirement and then you don't know what you want to do next. You, there's a ministry opportunity that you face a chance for you to start redirecting your focuses and say, well, I can now volunteer. I can now get involved in ministry. I can go out and do mission work. Mm -hmm. I can do, I've got, I can self-fund to do these things. Mm -hmm. Rather than think of yourself as ending, see it as a new beginning. Mm -hmm. And as you go to this next place, God can use you in more powerful ways than you've ever been used before because you're now available. You know, Ted, and that's, that's a lot to do with how God uses when we're available. That's right. And what better availability than someone who's young, still young, mm -hmm. has financial uh, security of sort, mm -hmm. and now can focus themselves yeah. on working on God's kingdom. kingdom Absolutely. That's right. We want to thank you, Ted. Thank, thank you for Amen. taking time with us. My pleasure. Coming and sharing with, with us thank great you. wisdom. Yes. We need to learn. Yeah. And, and, and if you're 
approaching that time or you're maybe somebody you know needs advice seek out good advice you know find good counsel just don't let things slide make a change we'll be right back